Today's episode is brought to you by Mazars. Sound Cartel. From Sound Cartel, I'm Nicole Goodman, and this is Business Essentials Daily. Payroll tax returns for the 2023 financial year are due in July. And for businesses with employees around the country, you'll need to keep in mind the different payroll rules for each state. Stephen Baxter, National Indirect Tax Partner at Mazars, explains the big task facing employers this financial year to Chris Ashmore. In the short period after year end, an employer has the responsibility to focus on all potentially connected entities that they control, all classes of employees, all categories of wages and all states. Payroll tax returns can be hard work. Indeed. Just as a reminder, how does payroll tax work? Well, payroll tax is payable by applying the payroll tax rate to the total employee wages above a payroll tax-free threshold. This is where it gets complex because these vary across the nation with rates varying from 4% to 6.85% and the tax-free thresholds ranging from 700,000 to 2 million. The tax-free threshold has an obvious purpose. It's designed to keep very small businesses out of the payroll tax system. Businesses with employees in only one state and with total wages only just above the thresholds will usually lodge just one return and make just one payroll tax payment per year. In some states, there is another tier with six monthly returns and payments. However, it doesn't take much payroll above the thresholds for a business to have to lodge monthly returns with payments for each of the first 11 months of the year, and then an annual return, which covers June wages, plus any other wages not reported in the first 11 months. The annual return calculates the total liability for the whole year, And then the amount payable with that return is the total annual liability, less the payments previously made over the 11 months beforehand. And when are payroll tax returns due? Well, this is another one of the complexities. Uh, Returns are due by 21st of July in Victoria, Queensland, WA, Tasmania and the Northern Territory, whereas returns are due by the 28th of July in New South Wales, ACT and South Australia. If you employ in more than one state, the reality is you have to prepare all the return calculations together. For that reason, such uh, employers often set an internal deadline for return preparation, which is well before the 21st of July. Why do you have to prepare all payroll tax returns together? That's so that the payroll tax-free thresholds can be apportioned between the states. To give you an example of how that works, let's say in the 2023 financial year, half your national wages bill is for employees in Victoria and the other half is for employees in New South Wales. In that example, the Victorian payroll tax three threshold is halved from 700000 to 350000 And so Victorian payroll tax will be payable on Victorian wages above 350000 This has the effect that the amount of wages in one state will affect the amount of payroll tax in another. Taking the example I just gave you, if you later found that the wages in New South Wales were more than those in Victoria, the New South Wales payroll tax-free threshold available would rise. But as Victorian wages correctly represented less than 50% of national wages, you would have a lower Victorian tax-free threshold and more Victorian payroll tax would be payable. To avoid having to repeat the calculations and return preparation across all states, best practice is to correctly determine total wages paid in all states first, then prepare the returns. What are wages for payroll tax purposes? Well, wages will typically include payments made through the payroll system, such as ordinary wages, leave payments, bonuses and super. These are the payments that typically get captured correctly in the monthly or six monthly returns lodged during the year. However, wages for payroll tax can include a series of payments that are not processed through payroll systems. These can include fringe benefits, 
which are typically based on fringe benefits reported in the most recent FBT return. They can include contractors who can qualify as employees for payroll tax purposes. Contractors are usually paid through purchasing systems based on invoices. Directors' fees, including fees invoiced by a director's company and shares issued and options granted to employees. The annual return process is the ideal time to review these categories of benefits and payments to determine if payroll tax is payable. And that can mean making inquiries outside of the employer's payroll and HR functions to the business units themselves and to management. We sometimes provide checklists to businesses for them to circulate to all relevant parties so that payments of these kinds can be identified. If a business has not paid payroll tax on these payments during the year and it finds it should have, is it in trouble? Provided it correctly identifies them and reports the annual totals in its annual return, there are usually no repercussions. The revenue authorities recognise that many businesses can only properly examine some payment categories annually. Further, they recognise that some payment types are only made once a year in June, for example, bonuses. It can mean, of course, that the net amount of payroll tax payable for the annual return is much higher than any of the 11 months that preceded it. That is quite common and of itself, it rarely ever triggers an audit. However, if a revenue authority saw a repeated pattern whereby the net payment accompanying the annual return was four, five, six times the usual monthly payment, they might start making inquiries whether the employer had failed to report wages during the year that it could have done so. Interest might be imposed in those cases. What issues should employers take extra care with when they prepare their payroll tax calculations? The first issue is to identify any entities that they should be grouped with. A payroll tax group only gets one tax-free threshold in a state. In New South Wales, for example, the loss of one payroll tax-free threshold when two related entities form a payroll tax group can cost up to $65,000 per annum. Grouping is a complex topic. Family groups, partnerships and, and entrepreneurs need to look at all the businesses that they control, which have employees. Things to look for include directorships, the businesses operated by beneficiaries of a trust, which also run a business themselves, and where employees work in more than one business. Any of these could persuade a revenue authority to group two entities and put a payroll tax-free threshold at risk. The second main issue to identify is contractors who should have been treated as employees upon whom payroll tax is payable. We have spoken about that on Business Essentials previously, so we won't address it here. Well, those are the items that are added to your tax bill. What about things that might reduce it? One thing to look for is payment types where one part might be taxable and another part exempt. Termination payments and parental leave payments are two examples of those. Another issue is to identify employees who work in more than one state over the year or who work outside Australia for some or all of the year. That outcome could determine which states the wages are allocated to or whether some part of the wages is exempt. For example, let's say a Queensland employer might have one employee who is based in Auckland for eight months of the year and another based in Melbourne having moved there for the final six months of the year. The wages subject to Queensland payroll tax should exclude the exempt wages while the first employee was in Auckland and the six months of wages for the second employee based in Melbourne, which might instead be subject to Victorian payroll tax. Finally, the um, the annual return is often the best time to check if any of the minor payroll tax exemptions and concessions might be available. Each state has them, and over the years they've included things such as businesses based in rural or low-income areas, apprenticeships, emergency services, leave, and special concessions for employing Indigenous persons or those with disabilities. There are too many of these to list here, but it is worth checking at annual return time whether any of these might apply. Although I wouldn't try claiming a COVID concession this year, though. That train has definitely left the station.
Are there any payroll tax surcharges or higher rates? Yes, yeah, several of the states have higher rates. For example, the payroll tax rate increases in Tasmania and WA for wages above certain thresholds. Victoria imposes a mental health and well-being surcharge of a further 0.5% and 1% on Victorian wages where an employer has national wages exceeding $10 million and $100 million, respectively. Queensland introduced its mental health levy from January the 1st this year. It has lower rates than Victoria's, being 0.25% and 0.75%, respectively. But for the 2023 financial year, it only applies to Queensland wages where an employer has national wages for the first six months from 1 January 23, which exceed $5 million and $50 million thresholds, respectively. What would your most important pieces of advice be to employers right now? Payroll tax returns require, on the one hand, determination of wage types and categories, and on the other, the actual calculation of taxable wages and tax liabilities. The calculations can, can really only be done in July after the June month-end pay runs and the year-end accounts are being prepared. However, the determination of the taxable wage types and categories can start before June month-end. The information gathering process to identify things like grouping contractors, wage types, paid outside payroll systems, exempt wages, etc., can and, and should start before 30 June. This is more than just simply start early. It's to start making inquiries tailored to the right people on targeted issues, especially being those that the payroll reports themselves usually do not pick up. Payroll tax returns are a big task, but a manageable one if there is early focus on the critical questions and not just the numbers. That was Steve Baxter, National Indirect Tax Partner at Mazars. This episode of Business Essentials Daily is produced by the team at Sound Cartel. Thanks for listening. I'm Nicole Goodman. We'll bring you more BE Daily tomorrow. Follow at BE Daily Podcast across social media and head to bedaily.com.au for more from the Business Essentials Daily Podcast. Sound Cartel. This episode was brought to you by Mazars. To find out more, visit mazars.com.au. That's M-A-Z-A-R-S dot com dot A-U.